so the motivation of the project it was uh, uh, we could say that we are not so original mm -hmm. because there was in the 90s uh, there was a, a book some yeah. oh, some i saw in the, uh, in the, the blog post is, uh, yes oh. the name is um, divergent path divergent paths uh, mm -hmm. by a, a swedish uh, author magnus bulongsko and he's uh, quite famous on the on the topics of convergence uh, technology adoption he he had a quite interesting paper on the on the um, criticizing the machinery investment theory that if you invest more in machinery you are going to become richer mm -hmm. so um, and Pat, um, patricio meller he is a, a chilean economist and a, and policy maker he was a member of the of the first government after the transition of, to democracy in, in chile and mm -hmm. they did this common effort to uh, analyze the divergent path of scandinavia yeah. but because they compared with um, Iceland is in the, this comparison too. Mm. And the Latin American countries and the Latin American countries that they included, it was uh, Chile, uh, Ecuador, Venezuela. Venezuela is uh, quite interesting because of the oil. And uh, if I don't remember wrongly, Bolivia too. Mm. And they say it in the introduction of this, uh, of the, of this book, that this is more than a comparison, it's a, some kind of um, description of the path of these countries. And the first chapter, they try to analyze why Latin America, and this is a specific Latin American countries, left behind in comparison with the Nordic countries. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 one of the origin of this idea is that at, at the end of the 19th century, there were differences, of course, between these countries, but the deep one, thing was quite clear and quite common between these countries is the de dependence on natural resources. Okay. So uh -huh. even that you see now in uh, Sweden, uh, there's any kind of, uh, the only uh, the only similar similarity between Norway and Chile are the woods in the, in the south of Chile and in the whole country in, in Norway. Uh -huh. There is a, a, there was a quite similar uh, dependence on natural resources at the end of the 19th century and at mm -hmm. the beginning of the 20th century. And now Norway, uh, the, more than 30% of the total export of Norway coming from oil. So mm -hmm. as natural resources is like the, the main uh, motivation to compare both uh, paths uh, in, in these different regions. And also in, the, in, this, in this book, in, in Meller and, and Blomstrom, they say one of the problems that we have is that we don't have the historical data to yeah. do the long run comparison. Mm -hmm. And this is the step forward that, that, that we have taken on this, uh, on this project, mm -hmm. and especially on this, uh, on this uh, article. Mm -hmm. Because we, uh, we have reconstructed, uh, we have elaborated the, the fiscal dependency series for the five countries, uh, uh, Bolivia, Chile, Peru, Norway, and Sweden. So mm -hmm. this is a, a quite great step forward because the, one of the problem of the natural resource uh, course or the natural resource dependent literature that is mainly based on the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. So the history started in 1970, but this is not, this is not true. And so we have taken back Till the 1850s. So this mm -hmm. is a quite um, important approach to see when started the, the dependence and when started the divergence between these countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand, of course, that uh, it's it's hard to summarize. Uh, mm -hmm. But if if you were to summarize some of the findings or the main finding, what would you well, say? The it main is? findings. Uh, you have it here mm. <laughs> on the the highlights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the main finding is this uh, even to similar uh, natural resource dependence in the economy and the export in both regions, the transition to a tax, uh, modern ta taxation system was quite faster and clear in the, in the Nordic countries. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that this caused an extremely big difference on the way that the states who uh, face, for example, volatility of natural resource prices. For, the, um, for Sweden, for example, with this enormous dependence on, on iron, 
Mm. Because it's not just the export of iron, it's just, it's only, uh, for example, if you take the amount of the metal mechanics industry in, in, in Sweden, mm. how important was the metal mechanic industry on the, uh, um, on, on the beginning of the 20th century, the tax system was a modern ta tax system. So they started doing the income tax, the, mm. they started to do some kind of, um, a more egalitarian uh, tax system than mm. in the case of the uh, Andean countries that they they use it. The, they see they see way that you tax something that you don't have problems to tax that is a natural resource. Mm. Why? Because it's, it's easier to tax natural resources because are homogeneous. Uh, there is a uh, in the in the case of a, for example, of the export of the natural resources you are taxing the buyer that is outside your country. You are not mm. taxing the, the, the inhabitants of your country. You are, mm. uh, and, uh, and this is um, the idea of the rentier state. The state become a, a, a state that uh, uh, decide to tax on the natural resources instead to tax the local mm. potential taxpayer. Yeah. And this produced this kind of a disaster that is when the the price of the commodity in the case of Chile for the salt pepper or the case of the guano in the case of Peru disappears. Mm. Also, you produce an incredible fiscal deficit, and also you don't have money to pay the basic stuff like education, health, mm. and in in our period now the pension and and uh, and even the. <laughs> The basic of the state, the, the military. Yeah? So mm. then you start to have uh, social disruption, etc. So uh, was this for for you expected results? We expected some kind of result on the on the modern tax system because it's something that has been uh, uh, studied uh, extensively, mm. but not the this amount of dependence of the natural resources, similar dependence of natural resources by the Nordic countries mm. at the beginning mm. of, the, of the 20th century. Mm. Um, uh, we were quite surprised in the case of Norway, for example, the amount of export of, of, of fish or the export of, of, uh, of lumber. Mm. Uh, so um, it seems that there's some kind of, uh, of, of long-term dependence in the case of Norway on natural resources, something that uh, uh, Sweden has escaped from this. Mm. But the management of natural resources in Norway, it has been quite wise. And now they are one of the most rich countries in the world mm. through this, uh, man this management of the natural resources. That also touches upon, uh, I think, um, a, re a related question which I uh, also have understood mm -hmm. that is one of the aims for, for the project um, to, to, um, to learn. Uh, what conclusions can you draw from the project that, for instance, developing mm -hmm. countries can use mm -hmm. today? Yeah, well, uh, we, <laughs> especially in the book, we were quite, quite, quite uh, humble. Mm -hmm. We say that at the end of the, in the conclusion of the book, we don't want to extract policy lessons, mm -hmm. but Try to explain which are the policies that they were taken in the past that maybe it will be related to an ongoing challenge. Mm -hmm. If this is not taken exactly the, the, the research, but if, if you ask me now, after five years of the project, after the books, the articles, everything, is that you can develop your country through natural resources. But these natural resources cannot be the only mm. uh, economic activity. And if mm. everything is focusing on one natural resource, mainly the, 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 the risk to become a uh, damage or harmful to mm. external shock is so big that uh, maybe it's better to have a less growth or, or a lower high uh, growth rate, but with some kind of uh, security in the long run mm. than to uh, try to exploit their natural resources in a, in a quite fast way and, uh, and try to 
it extracts all the rents that you can from these uh, from these uh, natural resources. And this is related to the environmental challenge of our time. So, for mm -hmm. example, all the energy trans green energy transition needs natural resources, and this is creating something that is called neo extractivism. Mm -hmm. in uh, in Africa and, and Latin America, that you can develop your country through the exploitation of the natural resources, but, but trying to use uh, these natural resources in a, some kind of wise, uh, wise management uh, of the natural resources. But looking at the past, uh, looking at the past of how the Latin American countries uh, develop the natural resource industry and the relation with the tax, uh, the tax system, it mm -hmm. seems that um, Putting all your hopes on the natural resource sector, it will harm the, the it will harm the, the environmental uh, policies and and the, and, the, and the biodiversity. So mm. there is some kind of natural capital that it could it couldn't be replaced if we just we are trying to develop the countries to natural resources. So uh, like. If you put me in like, don't trust too much natural resources to develop <laughs> your countries. <laughs> we need natural resources. We need to exploit the minerals. We need to, to we know the, the lumber. We, 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 we need uh, to exploit the forestry. But uh, this is, will be like a, some kind of um, debt with the future generations that it could be in, uh, impossible to pay. So, and the other thing, the, the countries like uh, Chile, Peru, and Bolivia, especially Bolivia, they they had had a, a some kind of a, a policy based on natural resources in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. but the results are not so clear. So, uh, and taking this in comparison with the, the, our finding in the past, it mm -hmm. seems that uh, especially when you put all your hope in just one sector on just one commodity, the risk is too much. The risk is too high. Right? Mm. And the, the diversification is one of the main uh, results that we have seen here. For example, in one of the chapters that um, that uh, are in the book, uh, mm. the comparison between Chile and Norway, and how Norway was diversifying the sector, even it was based too in natural resources. But mm. Chile, the, the number of products the, the country become richer, but the number of products of the of the basket is what reducing in, in in the in the long run. So, mm. so it's like even you are becoming richer in through income, you are mm. becoming poorer. Uh, yeah. in technology in technology level, and this mm. in the long run is the basis of development. So, uh, one typical economic history input that we have done is the the fiscal series for the five countries. Mm. The fiscal series they were not available in in terms of fiscal dependence. And you you have created uh, this. Yeah, because series. the fiscal dependence series was not available, and mm -hmm. they, were, they were available theoretically, but not nobody has done the, the work to to, to elaborate it mm -hmm. before us. Mm -hmm. For the research, I think that uh, it should be taken more with um, with which are the linkages between the economy, the natural resource sectors with the, with the rest of the economy. So something, there's some kind of missing link, uh, missing um, area on, on this topic. And this is yeah. something that we, are, we want to do with uh, part of the, of the group of, uh, that we are working on the project. And a more environmental uh, approach, environmental economics approach, uh, probably, uh, and, and it's something that I am doing with my other project on the Genuine Same. This is something that uh, is like it's going to be the, the the next step for the people that we have been working on this project and on the people that is working on the extent literature on the natural resources mm. is the the green energy transition. How we relate our work to the ongoing green energy transition and the demand for new minerals. Mm. So um, this is uh, the, the 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 thing that I mentioned before on the neo extractive mm. It's like. Um, one of them, the, the hot topics. Huh? Mm. So, uh, because the demand for lithium, for example, nickel, and mm. all the um, something that is called the new minerals, is going to increase. But also, it's going to increase. Uh, it's, it's increasing the the 
the demand for the old mineral, such as copper, because mm -hmm. you need the electrification to do the, the green energy transition. So I, I think that uh, there's a lot of new research to do, mm. but the, the ground uh, research or the ground facts, we have uh, found quite interesting uh, uh, insights from this project. 